Hello, welcome back. This is Math 100. This time we are going to study section 1.4. Now, in the last few sections, we have established some foundations of logic. And so today we will learn how to apply those principles uh, in analyzing arguments. So let's get started. Let me share my screen and we will get going. Okay, so section 1.4 is called analyzing arguments. Let's go ahead and start filling in some blanks here. As usual, I will write in red and I expect that as you watch these videos, you take careful notes, okay? All right, so the title of this section is analyzing arguments. All right, so what kind of arguments are we talking about? Uh, this is not yelling at each other, you know, uh, like in your family or friends or something, uh, because that's what some people think arguments are. No, an argument is a civilized conversation, okay, debate, uh, bringing issues, uh, logic, and evidence to argue to make your point, and you should be willing to change your mind. Uh, you should also be able to recognize when an argument is valid and when it is not. And that is really the whole point of this section. All right, the main question um, or the main questions, uh, the main question we'll be answering is this, how do you check if an argument is valid? Okay, now I am not saying if the argument is correct uh, or true, that is actually a separate issue. The uh, question of validity, as you will see, we will see in just a few minutes, the question of validity has to do with the structure, the logical structure of a certain kind of argument. All right. And so when I say a certain kind of argument, I have to make that distinction between deductive and inductive argument. Let's start there. Okay. We focus on the validity of what we call a deductive arguments, okay, not inductive. Now, what's the difference? Okay, here is the difference. Uh, when we talk about first inductive, actually, you know what? Let me just explain. I will write down this word inductive, but I should also mention here that there are two uh, general or basic types of arguments. Okay, so the, uh, and they're called inductive and deductive. First, inductive argument. An inductive argument is one based on specific cases, right? And based on specific cases that you bring, you make a general conclusion. Here's an example. Sparrows fly, doves fly, eagles fly, and you can add a few more, condors fly, uh, you know, many other birds fly. And therefore, what's the conclusion? What is the conclusion you can make? Maybe you can say all birds fly. Okay, you notice here, uh, I have given you three specific um, examples, sparrows, doves, and eagles, okay, and maybe a few others, okay, um, uh, and then based on these specific cases, I am making a general conclusion that all birds fly. Now, this happens to be a wrong conclusion, right, because for instance, chickens you can argue that do not fly. Penguins are certainly birds, but they do not fly. They swim instead. And so all birds fly is an overgeneralization. Okay. But it is this, this type of argument going from specific to a general conclusion is called an inductive argument. The uh, other type of argument is called deductive. Okay. So Deductive arguments are ones where you apply general rules to make specific conclusions. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and, and set, write this on the side here. Inductive is to go from specific, specific to general. Okay, that's a good and maybe a quick way of remembering what an inductive argument is. And deductive is the other way around. Okay, so here we start with a general rule or a general statement. And then we apply that to a specific situation. All right, so that is a deductive argument. Applying general rules, you make specific conclusions. Here's an example. Every student must have an ID card. Okay, that is a general rule, right? You, in particular, a specific instance, okay, you are a student that is a very specific person, and therefore, what's the conclusion? Okay, and I think you can fill this in. 
right? Every student must have an ID card. You are a student and therefore, the conclusion seems to be a pretty, uh, a pretty easy one. You must have an ID card. Notice here, I start with a, a general statement that applies to all students. And then, then we move to a specific case. Okay. Now this is, you know, if these statements are true, if every student indeed has to have an ID card, and if you are a student, then there is no, not much room to dispute this claim that you must have an ID card, because this statement happens to be a valid uh, logical argument, valid, valid deductive argument. So the question of validity is what we are going to study uh, uh, momentarily. Now, before we go on, let me just say something here about the our argument types and the um, what we are to do with them. You check for not the validity, but the strength and the weakness of an inductive argument. So an inductive argument is not something that we test for validity. However, we check for validity of a deductive argument, All right? So what we are checking is different depending on what kind of argument we are looking at, all right? So again, let me, uh, just mentioned that uh, we are going to focus on the deductive argument because that's the that's where the question of validity applies. Okay, so uh, the word valid or the validity is the noun form of that word. Validity has to do with the structure of the argument and not the meaning. Okay, maybe I should mention here too, uh, not the meanings or the truth value of each statement in the argument. Okay, so you can make a false claim at the beginning and you can still have a valid argument. Okay, and I will talk about this uh, when we go uh, deep into this. But um, for instance, if the argument is valid, okay, and that means if the logical structure is correct, that's what the, the word valid means. Okay, if the argument is valid and if the if each statement, which we call a premise, is true, okay, in other words, if uh, what we say in the argument is correct, and if the argument itself has a valid structure, then the conclusion must be true. Now, an, an example you should be looking at is right here. You know, let's say it is true that every student must have an ID card. And by the way, it is true at most colleges, right? Uh, and if, let's say, you are indeed a student, okay, then uh, it is undeniable that you must have an ID card. Here, the logical structure is valid and every, uh, well, each of these two statements is correct, then the argument has to have the correct conclusion and the, con the conclusion must be true. And in this case, if you have a valid argument with true premises, we say the argument is, and here is the the, the best word that you can um, achieve in logic, the word sound, sound. Okay. It even sounds good, right? The word sound, uh, it's used as an adjective and that means it is uh, the logic is valid and the statements are true and therefore the conclusion must be correct. If that happens, we call that argument a sound argument. All right, so let's go on check for validity, how do you do that? We do that by using a, a specific type of diagram. Okay, we've already seen this, okay? Venn diagram, it's named after a logician, a British logician named John Venn, V-E-N-N. -N. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know a lot about John Venn except for his diagrams. So here is a man who is known for drawing a bunch of circles. Okay, um, so I am going to write something, a statement here, uh, which I think is important uh, for you to know. A deductive argument, try to get the, uh, the, the main uh, point of the statement. A deductive argument can be valid without the conclusion being true. What do I mean by this? What I'm saying is that the argument, as far as the logical structure is concerned, could be valid. But if the premises are false, then the conclusion can be wrong, okay? So a valid argument 
that the validity has nothing to do with the truthfulness or the correctness of the conclusion. That is a very important point for you to remember, right? So a valid argument can have a wrong conclusion. And this happens if the premises or you know, these statements are false. We will see uh, those in a minute, okay? It can also be invalid while the conclusion may be true. Okay, so the truth value of the conclusion cannot determine the validity. That's the point I am saying. Yeah, I know it's confusing. Uh, let me go ahead and draw some pictures and I will be able to explain these things in more details. Okay, so when we talk about uh, the premises and uh, analyzing the validity of a deductive argument using Venn diagrams, um, we need to understand how two things are related to each other. Okay, so when we talk about like students and people who have to have ID cards, we are talking about two groups of people, right? So these um, give rise to studying sets, all right? So how are two sets related to each other? That really is the key to understanding this, this section, right? Now, two sets can be disjoint. You know what the word disjoint means? Uh, mutually exclusive or separate, completely separate from each other. If one belongs to one group, then that uh, element cannot belong to the other group. That's what we mean by disjoint. Okay, so A and B are disjoint if they are like this. Okay, A could be the set of mammals, B could be the set of insects. Okay, no insect is a mammal and no mammal is an insect, for instance, right? A subset relation, this is going to be a key here. A subset relation means that one set is completely inside of the other set. In this case, we say A is a subset of B, okay? Uh, the only other possibility is an overlapping but not subset relation. So A could be here and B could be here, right? So for instance, we can have A as a set of singers and B as a set of athletes, okay? There are some people who are singers and athletes and there are people who are uh, singers but not athletes, there are people who are athletes but not singers, and then there are people who are neither, right? Anytime you have an overlapping uh, set or overlapping pair of sets, uh, those two sets will divide the entire universal set into four groups, okay? Uh, both A and B, A but not B, B but not A, and then neither, right? And in the subset relation, again, uh, Anything that is in the inner circle is always, has to be on the outer circle. And that really is the key. In the first case, this joint, if something is in A, then that makes uh, it clear that it cannot belong to the set B. All right, so let's go uh, to uh, apply these things to um, our uh, examples. Right? Let's draw some diagrams. When somebody says all whales are mammals, okay, that means that we have whales. And by the way, um, when, when we have a uh, universal quantifier like all or every, okay, that indicates that we have a subset relation, all whales. Okay, so we have whales. You see that? That's a set of whales. Every whales is in that circle. And this statement is claiming and it happens to be correct. All whales are mammals, right? So that means it's a subset. And also all whales are mammals, the subset statement also is equivalent to saying that if X is a whale, then X is a mammal. Did you get that? If X, if something is a whale, then that something must be a mammal, okay? Because that's what the subset relation means. So a subset relation, gives rise to an if then statement, conditional, okay? And where the, uh, the antecedent, the if part has to be the first set, and then the then part, the last part, the consequent will be the last thing mentioned in the statement. Second one, no fish are mammals. Also true statement. And in this case, you see the universal quantifier, but it's a universal negative quantifier, no. And so that means we have fish and mammals mutually exclusive or disjoint, okay? Some doctors are women, 
Okay, so, and again, this is a correct statement. All of these three statements are correct. Doctors are women. Well, some doctors are women. Okay, so now we have uh, basically uh, divided all people into four categories. Okay, so uh, what do you mean? Uh, we have doctors who are not women, doctors who are women, and women who are not doctors, and there are people who are neither women nor doctors. All right, so here's a key, and this is something that I should stress and you should uh, pay close attention to. All A, R, B is equivalent to saying if A, then B. Can always be represented by the subset diagram. A is the inner circle and B is the outer circle, right? All whales are mammals. If X is a whale, then X is a mammal. If something is in the inside circle, then it must be in the outside circle. All right, so with that in mind, we are going to go to the next video where you will be seeing the examples. But I want you to, I would encourage you to look at these five examples, right? See which ones you think are valid and which ones you think are not valid. So start thinking about this in advance and then check out uh, your thought process in the next video clip, okay?